So here it is. This is the crashed plane. It looks pretty bad. Oh my gosh. All right. Well, a fire just started, so that's not good. Yeah, so you can see already the murder aspect of this story is sort of taking over. Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today I am back in Plane Accident. If you don't know what this game is, it's essentially a game that allows you to become a plane crash investigator, which is pretty cool. If you haven't seen my first video on this game, a link will be in the top right corner. But without further ado, let's get into the video. Alright, so we are now arriving at the crash site. Unfortunately, the pilot has died, so we're not going to have that information to help us in this case. So let me go ahead and grab my backpack from the back of the truck here and we'll make our way down to the crash site itself because it's actually just a little ways away. So here it is. This is the crashed plane. It looks pretty bad. So the first thing I'm going to do is secure the wreckage. So this should be pretty straightforward. Let's go ahead and grab this one over here. There we go. One last one to do. And there it is. Oh, what the heck? Oh my gosh. All right. Well, a fire just started. So that's not good. Gonna grab my fire extinguisher and put out this fire. Holy cow. All right, well, luckily that got put out pretty fast, but I really hope the fire did not destroy anything in the cockpit because if it did, we may not be able to have that clue to tell us how the plane crashed because again, the pilot's dead. But only time will tell with that, so let's go ahead and start marking down the debris and wreckage. What's interesting is these seats are ejected. I don't know if the EMS did this when they were um, sort of trying to rescue the pilot or if it was like that when the plane crashed. And there's something over here. Oh wow, look at this. It's part of the wing. I have a feeling that this piece may have been ejected from the plane or separated from the plane during flight. I can't say for certain until we've really fully investigated all of this. But because it's so far away and behind the crash site, it's sort of leading to the possibility that it could have fallen off in flight before the crash. And speaking about the crash, now that I'm standing over here, you can actually see the trail of debris and the scar marks that the plane made during its approach and inevitable impact with the ground. Alright, so there's one last thing to uh, find here, and interestingly enough, it's a whiskey bottle or whiskey flask. So that is very interesting. And with that, let's go ahead and take some photos. There we go. So let's go ahead and give the technicians a call to bring the wreckage to the hangar. As you can see, here comes the van arriving to uh, apparently pick up the whole plane. All right, so here we go. We've made it to the hangar. Let's go into the office area and start reading these documents. We'll start with the case file here. And, oh, well, this is um, not good news for us. It looks like this aircraft was not carrying a flight data recorder. So, yeah, let's go ahead and close this. And let's go into the pilot's log. So we'll start with August 8th. And it looks like seems pretty routine. So on the 18th, it seems like the engine slightly stuttered. But now we've got the mechanic there, so we'll be able to give him a call. So let's go into the technical log. This is kind of where I want to see what's going on, especially with that engine. So let's go ahead and go to the 24th of October. So it looks like there was a couple of things replaced, like the yoke, the signal lights, and even the altimeter. Looks like the tires were replaced, a window was replaced. In March, the propeller was replaced, as well as the steering lines in the left wing. So yeah, I don't see any issues with the pilot's log or the technical log. Other than that one thing in the pilot's log where it said that the uh, engine was stuttering. But besides that, I mean, these are really well organized and just look fine to me. Alright, so next we're going to take a look at the witness testimonies. So here we go. Now, first things first, we've got the sheriff here. And he states that there were two witnesses, Helen and old Bill. So we'll have to give them a call. Let's go to Dr. Quinsby. And yeah, the pilot died because of internal injuries. So that is unfortunate. We'll move on to, I believe, the pilot's assistant. Okay, this is interesting. According to him, it seems like the pilot's wife was having an affair. All right, so let's go ahead and put some stuff on the whiteboard real quick. 
All right, there we go. I just put that up on the board and you can tell that murder has just been added in the top left. All right, so with that, let's go ahead and give the mechanic a call. I do want to hear from Paul. He may be able to give us some insight. Okay, so this is good. Looks like the mechanic knows what he's doing. So he's been working for almost 20 years and seven or eight of those years, he was actually working with the Goldbergs. And he's going as far as to say that we can scan the aircraft ourselves and check his work. He is uh, definitely not a guy that makes any screw ups. So let's go ahead and we'll do that. But first, um, we're going to go ahead and talk to these witnesses. So let's talk to Helen. So according to her, she saw the plane flying and it was sort of slanted. So that's really interesting. Let's go ahead and talk to old Bill. All right. So according to old Bill here, it looks like he saw the plane going down with smoke coming out of the tail and claims it must have been an engine malfunction or something like that. So we got to reassemble the aircraft, then we got to scan the aircraft, then send the parts out for examination, the engine and aileron, then we'll follow up with the whiskey flask and we'll see what that gives us. So we got three things to send out and uh, yeah, let's uh, get started. So first things first, I'm going to go ahead and grab this power tool right here. We're going to go ahead and start with the uh, propeller. There we go. Then let's grab this hatch and uh, put the hatch on. Now let's go ahead and add the uh, wing back on. There we are. And here is our mysterious aileron. And something interesting to take note of, other than the low battery warning, is the damage on this wing. All right, so first thing I'm going to do is scan for explosives because, I mean, ruling that out is always a good thing. All right, here we go. There goes the drone, ready to make it scan. And there's the laser. It's scanning. And there we go. So let's find out if there were any explosives. And no, there were no traces of explosives. So that's good. Now let's go ahead and just scan the surface. Let's see it make it scan. There it is. All right, so the scan shows no damage. We're going to have to discuss with the mechanic on these results. So yeah, I'll make sure to uh, do that in a little bit. But now that that's done, we got to take the engine out and the aileron and then send it out for some more detailed examinations. So here we go. Got this. We're just going to bring it right over to this box. There we go. Pick up the box and bring it over to the truck. All right. So here we have the engine. We'll go ahead and just actually take the engine right over here. There it is. And we will once again take this box out to the truck. We're also going to take this flask and put it in the box as well to be sent out. And there it is. All right, perfect. There goes the truck. So first thing I'm going to do is I am going to call the witnesses. So we're going to start with Paul because we got to discuss what the uh, scan told us. Okay, this is interesting. So of course, he's confirming the plane was functional and we're telling him that. And he also states that Mrs. Goldberg brought the plane back herself. Now, as you can see, something is starting to develop here. According to the assistant, we may have an affair going on. Now the wife's a pilot. This is an interesting story so far. Let's go back to the phone. And uh, yeah, let's uh, let's give Aerotech a call. All right, so Aerotech serviced the plane a year ago and it was serviced by an employee named Jim. So we're gonna have to talk to him if possible. But yeah, everything seems to look good on paper according to them. Now let's go ahead and give Mrs. Goldberg a call. She says, oh well, a violent life and a violent death. I had wanted to break up for a long time, but my husband didn't want to give me a divorce. That does confirm the story that we got from the assistant. So let's go ahead and start adding this to the board. Yeah, so you can see already the murder aspect of this story is sort of taking over. Something I did not expect walking into this. Let's go back to the phone and see if we can call anybody else. All right, so the assistant picked up the phone and wow, there's a lot here. Things had been sour between the Goldbergs for a long time. She wanted a divorce and he would say it would only be over his dead body. It was about their common property, a million dollars. It's very suspicious that this time she did not take the plane. All right, so let's take a break from the phone calls for a moment. Let's go ahead and check our inbox. So there's nothing in there. Let's see, did the truck get back? Yes, it did. All right, perfect. Let's go ahead and take the box over here and we're going to put the flask down. So let's see what the flask had to do with the uh, crash. 
All right, so having conducted the analysis, we confirm that there is a 15-year-old scotch whiskey inside. So there we go, we can confirm that whiskey was in the bottle. Let's go ahead and grab the other box here with the ailerons and engine, or should I say the aileron, since there's only one we uh, sent out. Having conducted a series of tests, we've found no technical malfunctions during the crash. The engine was operational. All right, so that's interesting. So let's go ahead and put this up on the board. So there's the whiskey and there is the engine. All right, from the aerodynamics department, we've checked the aileron and the primary analysis showed that the aileron could have fallen off before hitting the ground. We suspect it to be the fault of the applied mounting screws. We recommend a further examination of the screws. Wow, that's very interesting. So we're gonna go ahead and send the bolts for additional analysis. We're gonna take this over here and uh, yeah. All right, so we got the screws there in this little plastic bag and now we're gonna put it in the box and ship it out for examination. Now at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and call the doctor. All right, so we're basically just asking the doctor to perform a blood test to see whether or not Goldberg was piloting under the influence of alcohol. Pretty important, we gotta get that to know maybe if the crash was because he was drinking. But let me go ahead and give a call to Mechanic Jim real quick because we need to see what sort of inspection he did on the aircraft during its last maintenance session. So Jim says, I was the one that made the last inspection. Well, I mean, in general, it was all good. The aileron didn't touch it. If it was replaced, it must have been done earlier and not in our place. All right, so there it is. Now let's go ahead and give Mrs. Goldberg a call. Why didn't I take the plane to the mountains that day? I took the car and visited my lawyer on the way in order to file the divorce anyway. Do you suggest that it was me who caused this accident? That's ludicrous. Well, there we go. So that's our response from Mrs. Goldberg. So let's go ahead and put this on the board. There we go. So she has a possible alibi and uh, let's check our emails. Here we go with the inbox from the morgue. Oh wow, okay. So according to this, the pilot was sober. So he was not drinking at all. So we can actually just sort of cross out this stuff here. There we go. Now we did get the bolts back. So we're gonna find out right now what happened. Okay, this is very interesting. The screws were made out of a poor quality steel and they state that these screws should never be used on aircraft. So maybe it's not necessarily murder and it's more the screws that they used in the construction or repair of the aircraft. So with that, we've actually got to uh, do two things. We've got to call the lawyer who Mrs. Goldberg met with, and also Flycraft. All right, so it looks like Mrs. Goldberg has an alibi for this accident, or should I say crash. So let's go over to Flycraft and give them a call. All right, this is really interesting. So Flycraft is saying that they replaced the aileron about three years ago, along with a bunch of other things. So they've given us a phone number, and we're gonna call this guy, and we're gonna find out why these screws were put into the aileron when they shouldn't have been put on an aircraft at all. So according to Tom, Mr. Goldberg was very irate with Tom and wanted it to go faster. He wanted the process to be as fast as possible. So it looks like Tom ordered the wrong screws and uh, he's gonna be sending us over the order. So let's take a look. If this is the case, I mean, this Tom guy is going to be in big trouble. Here it is. Dear Tom from Flycraft, we have received your order for universal screws. So what we need to know is, has there been screws sold to Flycraft in the past? If so, we may have to, you know, sort of say you can't fly these airplanes. They've got a huge defect on them. They may crash. So let's go ahead and check. Interesting. So they did sell the screws, but they clearly stated that they shouldn't have been put on aircraft. All right, there it is. There is the cause of the accident. Wrong screws. 
what a roller coaster we went through possible murder we went through engine problems all the way down to these tiny little screws that were put in because the mechanic felt rushed and it ended up killing this pilot very interesting story and yeah i think this is a great place to stop if you want to get the game yourself it's like 11 bucks on steam a link will be in the description and if you've enjoyed this video make sure to leave a like and a comment and i'll see you all next time guys goodbye